Hi everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm Alexander Gladish, and uh, today I will tell you about uh, an approach to implementing and designing Quink quickly. Functional UI sketches with Lua templates and Mermaid JS. Uh, I will tell you about the case that we are solving. Some approaches to design that that to implementation of the design that were considered. I would, would tell you a little bit about the tools, or quite a bit about the tools that we are using. And uh, after conclusion, I hope that there we will be some time for questions. Well, I'm a programmer in my background. I'm with Lua since uh, 2005, I believe. It's my favorite <laughs> programming language. And, uh, but Alas, I'm mainly doing management work now. And uh, the case I'm, I will be talking in this, well, talk, <laughs> is a huge professional enterprise application for civil aviation. The civil aviation uh, domain is really, really huge. Its uh, informatization started, I believe, in 1930s. And it got piled up, it piled up, it, and piled up, and there's lots of legacy that's still used. So it's a, it's a huge domain. And uh, the, our task is to, well, renovate, so to say, 20 years old Windows application, which, which is still developed, still being in use. But, well, it's about uh, the lifetime cycle in the aviation is about 20 years, or maybe 25. So it's time to replace it. So we are implementing, uh, developing a modern single page web application instead. Like I said, the product is huge. So there's not a single person, I think, anywhere, which is able to fit it in his head alone. So it's a team effort. There are technology experts uh, which knew, know the technology deeply. It, there are product owners and project manager which have the vision of the new product. product. And there, there's a designer in design team which, well, can design. So uh, the application consists of set of screens, a large set, I think in the end it would be about 100, or maybe more. If it would be a web page, I would say that not screens but pages, but right here we call it screens. And each screen can uh, be dedicated to an object, a collection of objects, or to some process. For example, uh, I don't know, the list of flights and the one individual flight itself to be configured in the airline schedule. And for each screen in the new application, we have to, using the old application as a template and the worldwide knowledge, so to say, the other applications that are doing this thing, we have to design it. We have to cut uh, the screen. We have to consider first the concept. Do we need the screen? How should we approach it? How should it work? When we have to do functional sketches, and uh, sometimes for difficult screens, inter some interactive studies, brief ones, then uh, designer has to design sketches to look nice and be useful, usable. And uh, after this comes the implementation. Well. The, this talk is about functional sketches, the second step. What are the functional sketches? Here's an example. Sorry, it's in Russian, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the main question which the functional sketch has to answer is uh, what is on the screen? How does it work? It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be designed. But it has to show what is on the screen and, uh, well, what can you do with it? So that's just one, one example. And uh, when design sketch, since main questions are already answered, answers the question, how does it look? The designer has to 
make it readable, usable, and well, look nice. So this, that's a functional sketch. That's uh, what designer made of it. Doesn't matter what, what's shown on there. If anyone here is uh, from airline industries, I'm sorry for the budget up terminology, but I don't want to cloud your minds with it. Um, anyway, my goals is, first of all, there are, like I said, a lot of screens in the application. And, uh, well, you, you have to see the flow of the screens, how a uh, user can move from one screen to another. Otherwise, you will get confused. And, uh, but the main thing is that I need the functional sketches themselves, obviously. Uh, and it doesn't matter how do I make these screens, because they're just illustration, just images. Although those screens are uh, well reviewed by the team, uh, I'm basically only one person who does them, who implements them, actually. So as long as there's some uh, facilities for use, which uh, lets me not to drown in small changes for stuff, which is the same on each screen, for example, uh, it doesn't really matter what I use to get this, this screen done. Uh, as long as I have uh, facilities to rapidly iterate on it, because one screen can be changed, one illustration can be changed maybe 50 times at, for difficult screens. Usually it's five or six iterations until we get it right. So it has to be quick. Uh, well, what tools to use to design those functional sketches? Nowadays there are a lot of tools, starting from raster or vector editors and uh, to the specialized editors like, like Balsamic. But well, you know, I'm a programmer. I work best when my hands are on the keyboard and not touching the mouse. Of course, I can use most of those tools, and, and what I can't use, I can learn to use. But uh, I spent all these years to be able to effectively work with essentially structured text with code. I can do that quickly. And uh, I'm used to, well, as an engineer in commercial projects, to getting work done uh, first and uh, getting the work done uh, perfectly on the second. It, I found that for me it doesn't work this way for visual tools. I have to fiddle so it looks nice. So, uh, well, I wanted to, of course it's not the first time I'm doing this kind of work. It's probably the largest by far. Uh, projects, but still. Uh, and then I had to draw the diagram, the flow diagram for the screens once again. Uh, I dropped all the tools I used before and I came to this little tool called Mermaid, Mermaid.js. Here's the link. Uh, it allows you, it's not the only one tool which does it, of course, but uh, this particular to tool allows you to describe the diagram you want in a simple textual format. And then there's uh, this little uh, visual editor, which, which is online and as you can see your changes as you, as you type. It's quite convenient. So I thought I would create a screen flow diagram. Here's a very simple example. We have a list of flights and uh, we can create a new flight from this list. Uh, by doing some action called create. On the left you can see the code for this diagram. As you can see it's trivial. You declare the list, uh, you declare, sorry, the boxes, the nodes, and then you uh, declare the connections, the er arrows between nodes. Uh, well, what is this create? User, user presses the button. So I tried this. I tried to embed the HTML into the uh, arrow label, and well, it worked. It works because uh, Mermaid internally generates SVG 
with embedded HTML and it renders, if it's uh, used as a command line tool, it renders this uh, using uh, the headless browser, the Phantom GS. Uh, so, well, pretty easy. I just type some HTML and uh, I get a nice button. Let's go further. And uh, here's the list of flights in its in empty states, the li state list of flights screen. Uh, it says, well, it has header, it has, uh, well, there are no flights message, and a button to create. As I, as I said, it should not look beautiful. It should look functional so the designer and programmers will figure out what's going on. The beauty of, of design will hamper this process actually. And well, there's a create button which leads, leads to the new flight form. Here's the code for this diagram on the left. Uh, and well, here's a new flight form. It's greatly simplified, of course, but uh, still uh, there's a flight airline code and flight number and uh, airport codes. Well, it's not an airport, it's a free Moscow airport, never mind. <laughs> and uh, well, the flight dates and you can create or cancel. And uh, well, both of those buttons lead to list of flights. I assume that uh, for most, and it, it really is, for most of the screens, uh, uh, actually, what the button does, what this or arrow means, uh, is clear for, from the context. Sometimes it is not, and you have to uh, add some, well, commentary on this. But still, uh, usually it works only this, the, the screen and what the buttons do. If the person knows what, uh, um, well, enough about the technology, it's, it's sufficient. Uh, so, uh, on the left there's a code for this diagram. As you can see, it's uh, rather ugly. But still, it works. And um, we've got all three, uh, all two, sorry, kinds of screens, of, of illustrations we need. The screens th themselves are detailed on the right, on the left, sorry. And on the right there's a screen flow diagram that helps you navigate those screens. Uh, but, well, when you are doing HTML, it's not very uh, convenient to use just an HTML, especially in this case, because you don't have actual browser available. Then, you, well, you could have it, but it uh, takes some work to set up the environment. So, uh, Right here is kind of um, HTML4 era design. When you, even without dy dynamic HTML, when you have uh, only the li layout. So I think in theory you could write some JavaScript, JavaScript here, but I never tried. Uh, instead I'm using templates, templates to generate my screens. And here is the uh, list of flights screen, this one. Uh, as a separate file, so to say. As you can see, uh, that's the simplest example. Uh, there's uh, header, no flights messages, and button. Uh, and I'm using uh, those placeholders and curly braces to indicate templates. As you, I think most of you are familiar with at least one template language. Uh, so. Here, the uh, template has uh, arguments. So that's a title template, which has argument, uh, the title string. And here is link argument, which has a link, sorry, template. I will uh, call them actually not templates, but, but helpers, helpers after the handlebars template, template engine. So we have title helper and link helper. And a link helper has uh, one argument is the screen name, <coughs> which links uh, targets to, points to, and then the link body itself. As you can see, I'm not adding any kind of layout here. I could, for example, move this bold 
uh, markup inside the title template. But since th those two templates uh, to help us are so basic, I don't want to do this. I don't want to change anything because uh, otherwise, uh, I don't want to have side effects, I mean, because otherwise it would be harder in, at the later point to refactor this, this thing. So all that those should say to the template system is that we, for this bunch of template code, the title is list of flights. And this uh, button leads to the new screens. Actually not button, but this whatever piece of text there will be in the uh, result in HTML. Uh, this code results to exactly this screen. Nothing is changed vis visually. Uh, so here's the new uh, flight form, which is ex exactly the same. We'll, we'll not read it out loud. So uh, like I said, we have two basic helpers, title and link here. And uh, here, here is the format for those helpers. Like you, like you see, the title text uh, takes uh, text as a single argument, and this argument goes until the end of the argument string. So the, this space is ignored. And not ignored, but put in, inside the argument. And uh, the link here uh, has two arguments. One is word, as defined by uh, a set of continuous set of non-continuous lists, sorry, of non-space characters. So this is the screen. And then everything to the end is body. OK, so let's uh, try to define those two helpers. Uh, I introduced the, uh, actually, that's the only, I believe, single one helper which has to be defined by the system. Uh, it's, it's define, which lets to you to define the <coughs> other helpers. Define, uh, so you define the helpers right in the body of your templates, basically. And the define takes the symbol, like the name of the helper, as the first argument. Then there's a table, Lua, finally. Lua table of arguments, here it is. And then there's the code of the template. What does it mean? Well, here you can see the definitions for simplest possible implementation of, of title and link, which just leave the layout unchanged and don't do anything. And here the code is, uh, well, Lua string, not the code, which contains the uh, variable name, the argument name from the template. Uh, right here, uh, then the title is encountered. Uh, it gets replaced by the uh, implementation, which I will show on the, one of the next slides. It gets replaced with this string, which in turn gets uh, replaced, this uh, placeholder text gets replaced from the uh, Arguments. Well, that's obvious. But uh, okay, let's let's go next. Let's let's look at the implementation. The uh, here's the define function, which basically sa says uh, here's string. Well, it, that's all this string, from title to, to the end. Uh, <coughs> let's uh, eat. Uh, First word, then table, then all the text there is from this string. And let's load uh, Lua values from the argument. So basically the Lua value function, uh, all it does, it appends, uh, sorry, prepends to its argument string, the, word, the keyword return. So it would be return this table or return this text. And then call, calls load string and that's it. Since uh, I'm only one person working with this, or it, uh, no person who would work with, with this has to use the uh, secure environment, well, uh, it's okay to just not do any sandboxing, just call load, load string and, and that's it. Uh, well, 
So you load the arguments as a table. You load the code, which may be a string or, or a Lua function code. And then uh, if it's a string, you just wrap it so it will uh, work on replacing uh, the placeholders in this string with the actual values. And then you define this symbol, the title, so it will be available for future replacements. Uh, how does it work? The definitions here are, uh, are uh, put into context. Context is a table which, is, uh, which holds everything uh, which, which can be replaced. So this text has to be in the context of the, this uh, title invocation. It will be put there to oh, this title invocation, of course. It would be put there by, by this defined code. Uh, the context can be nested. So uh, the, it's, it all works. Uh, as, can, can you see this? No, you, I removed this code. Uh, the con con uh, sorry, the context can be nested. Uh, so right here, you're in global context. Is it correct? Yes. In global context. And uh, inside the title, there's a nested context that has the text definition. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm coming through, but uh, just look at the code. I, I will have the uh, link to the repo at the uh, end of the slides. Okay, anyway, enough of this. So let's define some, something useful. Here's a title uh, macro as a helper, sorry, as a law of, implemented as a Lua function, which gets uh, the text argument. And it saves it somewhere in the root context and just returns it. Well, first doing some replacements in case it's contains uh, other placeholders. And here's a link uh, helper, which, well, uh, stores the link uh, between two screens and uh, returns the body of the link. And uh, one interesting thing that's uh, include the uh, loading the template we are linked at. Uh, so we will be able to uh, enumerate all the links there. So we will be able to build this screen flow diagram. We will have data. And uh, I will get to, be, to that a bit later. And uh, well, that's it. Here's a, how include is implemented. It's really simple. So we just uh, store the template name in the context, <coughs> in the create nested context, store there the template name and call and read this template name. It's actually should say template, not file name here. And uh, well, call the replace. So all placeholders are replaced there. And that's it. And uh, so depending on how you defined, define your title and link helpers, you will get uh, several kinds of diagrams from the same set of templates, which has ended up quite useful for me. So from the same set of templates, I'm getting the outline diagram, which has only screen titles and arrows. And uh, from the same set of templates, I'm getting the close-up diagram, which we have seen earlier, the screen itself with little arrows pointing to other screens. And also I can get a printable diagram, which uh, has no arrows, but only text content, uh, screen content, sorry. Uh, well. So that's useful. And uh, for me, this is the main feature of this template in engine and the reason actually I, I went implemented it on my own. Uh, so more useful helpers. Uh, here's a comment which does nothing and just eats its argument. Here's a horizontal ruler, HTML, which I found useful to separate blocks of templates. And here's an expression which uh, accepts uh, arbitrary Lua code, probably with the other placeholders embedded, <coughs> and uh, well, mm, just loads it and executes the standard stuff more or less. 
Uh, okay, so uh, here's another helper, Viv, which is really useful. It uh, allows me to uh, disable or enable parts of the... Uh, ah, sorry, it's Viv, not them. Uh, Viv dis allows me to define my own context. Uh, for example, when in, used in conjunction with then helper, which uh, renders uh, the, its body only then uh, the symbol is, in the co is defined in context. I can uh, define at the same place both editable or not edit, no read-only parts of the screen. It's often that uh, for this same set of data, uh, it often happens that uh, you has to show the editor uh, form, uh, which user, user can change, or just uh, preview this data of some form or, or another. Mm -hmm. So I define this form, which uh, looks differently when it's editable or not. And then I enable editable in the additional context inside this, and just uh, invoke this template. And voila, I get the, this line and not this line. So everything related to the same set of data is kept together. Uh, well, another use for the Viv helper is, is to define extra context like constants uh, to be used inside the template. Here I, uh, I have a simple histogram drawing macro template, which, uh, well, uh, just calculates the width of the histogram from its arguments. Uh, well, some stats. Uh, it took me two days to implement the core functionality. It was about 250 lines of code. And uh, well, uh, I'm using this tool to create uh, different screens, different illustrations uh, for half of a year now. And uh, the code grew up about to about 330 lines of code, mostly additional error handling and diagnostics. And we created about 60 sketches and f finalized 60 different sketches, uh, and many more to come, I believe. Was it worth it? Well, yes. It's not invented here syndrome at its uh, best or worst, and I don't know. But still, uh, I've got the tool that does what I need. I've got, I've got it uh, really cheaply, effort-wise. And uh, its output, while not ideal, is quite readable and useful for the des designer and for the programmers and for, for the whole team. And uh, well, I had much fun coding it. Uh, you may ask, why not something else? It, given that I spent really, really low amount of time on working on the, this tool alone, I think that studying another tool would take uh, about the same time. And uh, well, but if you do know another good tool which does what I need, please share. It may be useful. Well, there are some problems in this tool. First of all is error diagnostic, which are almost non-existent, because I'm the only user right now. It, it gets better, but uh, since most of the time I know what's up with an error, I just skip it. It, it can be improved. Then uh, the main problem here is debugging the HTML output. Uh, not the output itself, but how it's rendered, because basically it's like it was done in uh, Internet Explorer 6. So you don't have any debug console, not, not, you can do nothing, it's just an image. You have to just try this and try that. And well, uh, there are some issues with expressive power of this language, but it's more than enough for me right now. Well, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Please. Yes. Um, would there have been any use for doing a non-HTML-based uh, prototyping, like using ticks or graphes? The question is: Will we, there be any use on using this tool for non-HTML diagrams? Well, no. Uh, using a tool which did not 
touch a HTML like generating an image by yeah else. yeah uh, the uh, sure because uh, all I do is work with text as long as the input for your tool which does something uh, called or something else is text you can use it uh, actually for me the main new feature here is not the template language is a mermaid thing because it's, uh, it allows me to draw those flow diagrams easily between screens. And uh, as for the template language, I think that uh, you probably can use whatever you like, or, or this one. It's, the link is here. Welcome. And also patches and pull requests are welcome too. Next question. Thank you. Thank you.